morning. Today the topic of my lecture will be on the redundancy resolution of human fingers in object translation motion. This lecture has been divided into two parts. The first one is the introduction to redundant manipulators. The outline of my lecture will be as follows. First we have the introduction in that we will be seeing what is redundancy and how the redundancy is resolved or realized using the human arm and then we will be seeing the advantages and disadvantages of redundancy. Then we have the task decomposition approach where we will be seeing the fundamental equations pertaining to that then we will be seeing the secondary subtask where it is given as the desired trajectory and the objective criterion to be instantaneously optimized. Then finally we will be seeing the applications of redundancy in obstacle avoidance method and in singularity avoidance. Coming to the introduction. A manipulator is said to be redundant if it has more degrees of freedom than the than it is necessary to perform a given task. For example, if you see the given manipulator here, it has 3 degrees of freedom where we have the first joint the revolute joint, the second is also revolute joint and the third is also the revolute joint where the independent coordinates are theta 1, theta 2 and theta 3. Here there is a task to track the trajectory between the point A and B. This trajectory in the Cartesian space is a two dimensional trajectory whereas the degrees of freedom of the manipulator is 3. Thus there is a matching or there is a mapping from 3 degrees of freedom joint space to the 2 degrees of freedom Cartesian space and there is a mapping from 3 to 2 degrees of freedom. Hence there is 1 degrees of freedom extra in the joint space and hence this manipulator is a redundant manipulator because there is a matching or mapping from 3 degrees of freedom to 2 degrees of freedom and hence we have here 1 degrees of freedom extra in the joint space which is acting as a redundant part. Now coming to the realization of redundancy by the human norm. The human arm is redundant because it has 7 degrees of freedom mapping to the 6 degrees of freedom Cartesian space. What are the 6 degrees of freedom in the Cartesian space? Yes, it has x, y, z positioning in the x, y, z coordinates and orientation around the x axis, y axis and z axis that is alpha, beta, gamma and totally the Cartesian space has 6 degrees of freedom which is x, y, z and alpha, beta, gamma that is roll, pitch, yaw angle. Whereas the 7 degrees of freedom in the human arm are 3 in the shoulder joint, 2 in the elbow joint and 2 in the wrist joint. The 3 is roll pitch here in the shoulder and 2 that is flexion extension and pronation suffination. Here also we have 2 degrees of freedom flexion extension and another one in the wrist. Thus totally we have 7 degrees of freedom for the human arm. Three in the shoulder, two in the elbow and two in the wrist. This 7 degrees of freedom mapping to 6 degrees of freedom in the Cartesian space and hence we have 1 degrees of freedom extra for the human, human harm. Thus the 1 degrees of freedom is redundant for the human arm and hence the human arm is versatile and has broad applicability. Thus for example, if you want to grasp an object, that object will be having two tasks this task will be having two tasks one is the positioning of the hand and another one is the orientation of the hand. So for the positioning we need 3 degrees of freedom and for the orientation we need 3 degrees of freedom. Thus we have one more degrees of freedom by the human arm which is redundant. For example in the grasping case we have the redundant configuration by the elbow elevation angle as shown in the figure here we have elbow down with that posture we can grasp an object similarly we can also grasp the same positioning of the object by elbow rising up. 
thus we have the elbow elevation angle coming up into the picture. Next coming to the advantages and disadvantages of the redundancy. The advantages obviously it is advantages to avoid obstacles to avoid singular configurations of the robotic manipulators and to perform low energy consuming motions. And finally, if some of the joints are kaput or they are not functioning due to the failure of the system, but still the task can be achieved by the remaining joints. But coming to the disadvantages, the system becomes bulkier in size and heavier in weight because of more joints and actuators. Likewise, it requires more complex control strategy because of the heaviness in the necessary computations. Now, coming to the methodology which is the decomposition of task. Thus, the task given to a manipulator for the redundant manipulators is decomposed into primary subtask and secondary subtask where the primary subtask is the major task with higher priority and the secondary subtasks are performed after performing the primary subtask. For example, in the case of spray painting and welding task, we have two tasks. The task of spray painting and welding can be decomposed into two tasks or subtasks name hand position control and hand orientation control, where the hand position control is the one task with higher priority. Now, coming to the basic equations of redundant manipulators, consider an n degrees of freedom which has n joint angles given by the generalized coordinate vector that is theta equal to theta 1 to theta n, where the ith joint is given by theta i. And assuming that the first task is given by the manipulation vector which is x 1 is equal to f of f 1 of theta, it is the forward kinematic equation where x is a Cartesian position of the end effector which is equal to the function of the joint coordinates. And in this case consider the desired trajectory for x 1 which is represented by x 1 d of theta, x 1 d of t sorry x 1 d of t it is where t varies from 0 to t f with the time step where the time step is the sampling period in this simulation where t f is the final time. And for the secondary case for the secondary subtask there are two cases first one is the case one which is where the secondary subtask is given as a desired configuration represented by x d x 2 d of t where t obviously varies from 0 to t f where t f is the final time and the secondary subtask is represented by x 2 equal to f 2 of theta whereas the primary subtask we have seen in the previous slide it is represented by x 1 equal to f 1 of theta here for the secondary subtask it is represented by x 2 equal to f 2 of theta here for the case 1 the secondary subtask is given by x 2 d that is a decide a configuration it has to reach. Similarly, the case 2 for secondary subtask is the performance criterion where this performance criterion is to be maximized instantaneously to achieve the redundancy based configuration. For example, you are tracking the trajectory in that situation there is an obstacle you are tracking here you need to avoid this obstacle while tracing the same trajectory. Similarly, this objective criterion is used to avoid singular configuration while tracing this given Cartesian trajectory. Continuing the fundamental equations, the generalized solution for the differential kinematics which is x 1 dot equal to j 1 theta dot is given by this expression which is theta dot equal to j 1 pseudo inverse x 1 d dot plus i minus j 1 pseudo inverse j 1 into o 1, where the first term that is j 1 pseudo inverse x 1 d dot is the generalized solution of the joint velocity to obtain the primary subtask 
to track the given desired trajectory x 1 d of t. Similarly, this second term on this equation 1 is to perform the excessive operation due to the redundant degrees of freedom available. The excessive task will be avoiding singularity, avoiding obstacles and also to avoid or to keep the joint angles within the mechanical joint angles limit. And the vector O1 is the n dimensional arbitrary constant vector. We are going to see that vector in the next coming slides. And now coming to the Murray Penrose because we have seen in the previous slide the generalized expression equation 1 is given by in terms of pseudo inverse and thus the pseudo inverse is how to find or how to compute the pseudo inverse. The Murray Penrose pseudo inverse is computed in two ways one by the right inverse and the other one by the left inverse. The right inverse is given by the expression j pseudo inverse equal to j transpose multiplied by j j transpose whole inverse. This we have the right hand side getting inversed and hence it is right inverse and this when we will use right inverse depends on the number of rows and columns of the Jacobian matrix j. When the number of columns is greater than the number of rows that is the degrees of freedom in the joint space is greater than the degrees of freedom in the Cartesian space we use the right inverse methodology. Here j, j pseudo inverse equal to i hence it is right inverse. Similarly left inverse is a situation when the number of rows is greater than the number of columns of the Jacobian matrix j and thus the expression is j pseudo inverse for the right for the left inverse is j pseudo inverse equal to j transpose j whole inverse multiplied by j transpose. Now coming to the quick properties of the pseudo inverse, these are the properties of pseudo inverse where it shows I read out some of them a pseudo inverse whole pseudo inverse equal to a and the right inverse is given as we have seen in the previous slide a pseudo inverse equal to a transpose multiplied by a a transpose whole inverse and then we have a a pseudo inverse whole transpose equal to a a pseudo inverse. Finally, we have one more property which is a pseudo inverse a whole transpose equal to a pseudo inverse a. Coming to the proof for this expression which is this proof we will come back after this uh, derivation. So, now coming to the two cases of a secondary subtask, the first one secondary subtask is provided by the desired trajectory. What is the case 2? The secondary subtask is provided by the criterion function which has to be maximized instantaneously. The first case is secondary subtask provided by the desired trajectory. Here the manipulation vector is x2 equal to f2 of theta and the desired trajectory is given by x2 d. We select the vector o1 in the previous expression of the generalized joint velocity vector. The o1 is selected to realize the desired trajectory x2 d of t. The time derivative of this equation manipulation vector equation is given by x2 dot equal to j2 theta dot substituting x2 dot equal to x 2 d dot of t x 2 d dot and the expression 1 which is the previous slides expression for theta d dot in this equation. We have the third equation coming out to be x 2 d dot minus j 2 j 1 pseudo inverse x 1 d dot equal to j 2 multiplied by i minus j 1 pseudo inverse j 1 into the vector o 1 which is number equation 3. Now, considering this expression which is j 2 hat equal to j 2 multiplied by i minus j 1 pseudo inverse j 1 and the generalized solution of the system of linear equations which is a x plus b that is the generalized solution for this system is x equal to a pseudo inverse b plus i minus a pseudo inverse a into the vector o. Considering these two equations we get o 1 in terms of O2 as expression or equation number 4, where O2 is the n dimensional arbitrary constant vector and from the references of Yoshikawa 
and Klein which is given in the references number 1 and 2 we get i minus j 1 pseudo inverse j multiplied by the j 2 hat pseudo inverse equal to j 2 hat pseudo inverse. Therefore, the generalized velocity will be obtained in terms of j 1 and j 2 as equation number 5. If x 2 equal to theta and j 2 equal to i x 2 equal to theta denotes the secondary subtask presents the desired trajectory of the whole arm configuration and j 2 equal to i with these two conditions the j 2 hat expression can be turned into j 2 hat pseudo inverse equal to i minus j 1 pseudo inverse j 1 whole pseudo inverse equal to i minus j 1 pseudo inverse j 1. The proof of this we will quickly see right now. This is the proof where j 2 hat is becoming i minus j 1 pseudo inverse j 1 having the conditions that j 2 equal to j 2 into i minus j 1 pseudo inverse j 1 and j 2 equal to i having these two conditions the first equation will turn out into j 2 hat equal to i minus j 1 pseudo inverse j 1. Thus j 2 hat taking the pseudo inverse of this expression we have i j 2 hat pseudo inverse equal to i minus j 1 pseudo inverse j 1 whole pseudo inverse. Now, you expand this equation in terms of a right inverse which is given by a pseudo inverse equal to a transpose into a a transpose whole inverse taking this and substitute this expression here we have the expression for i minus j 1 pseudo inverse j 1 whole transpose is turning out to be this one with this another property of a pseudo inverse. Substituting this result in the above equation of j 2 hat pseudo inverse we have j 2 hat pseudo inverse equal to i minus j 1 pseudo inverse j 1 whole multiplied by the inverse of j i minus j 1 pseudo inverse j 1 multiplied by i minus j 1 pseudo inverse j 1 whole inverse. Now, we have this term which is the inner term of this generalized inverse has been expanded to this expression which is i minus j 1 pseudo inverse j 1 minus j 1 pseudo inverse j 1 plus j 1 pseudo inverse j 1 j 1 pseudo inverse j 1. Simplified that by this property of a pseudo inverse we simplified this expression into i minus j 1 pseudo inverse j 1 which is j 2 hat coming out in terms of this. Hence we have this condition from the previous expressions that is i minus j 1 pseudo inverse j 1 whole pseudo inverse equal to i minus j 1 pseudo inverse j 1 multiplied by the inverse of i minus j 1 pseudo inverse j 1. Let b is given by the expression which is inside this bracket i minus j 1 pseudo inverse j 1 thus the equation reduces to b pseudo inverse equal to b b inverse post multiplying the expression b inverse equal to this by both sides by b b pseudo inverse we have this expression coming out and coupling the matrix and the inverse pairs it reduces to this equation is reduced to b that is b pseudo inverse b b pseudo inverse equal to b just b. But we know as a property b pseudo inverse b b pseudo inverse equal to b thus b equal to b pseudo inverse that is j hat 2 pseudo inverse equal to i minus j 1 hat j 1 pseudo inverse j 1 multiplied by the uh, that is i minus j 1 pseudo inverse j 1 whole pseudo inverse equal to i minus j 1 pseudo inverse j 1 that is b pseudo inverse equal to b as per the given proof. Now, coming to the continuation of case 2 of the secondary subtask where the objective criterion function is used to be manipulate ma to be optimized instantaneously choose the value of o1 of equation 1 that is to maximize the criterion function as large as possible one method is proposed by yoshikawa and it is detailed below which is given as o1 equal to eta into op the vector o1 is given by the vector the product of the vector with the scalar constant 
where eta is n dimensional vector given by eta 1 to eta n where every eta 1 or eta i is given by the expression eta i equal to partial derivative of the function c of theta with respect to the generalized coordinate theta and theta p or o p is the scalar constant which is generally positive. Thus, the desired velocity is given by the expression theta d dot equal to j, j 1 pseudo inverse x 1 d dot plus i minus j 1 pseudo inverse j into eta o p where the second term i minus j 1 pseudo inverse j 1 into eta o p corresponds to the orthogonal projection of o 1 on the Jacobian j 1. Now, coming to the applications which is the final part of this lecture application of redundancy in order to avoid the robot manipulator linkage from the undesired regions of the joint space. For that particular exploitation of redundancy we will be seeing two three conditions or examples first one is obstacle avoidance. Here the aim or objective is to make the end effector follow the desired trajectory by avoiding collisions with the obstacles. The given parameters are the link lengths and the initial joint configuration which corresponds to the initial end effector position. Now coming to this simulation which has been done in MATLAB. where we have given as per the examples of Yoshikawa, Suni Yoshikawa, we have the obstacle which has to be avoided in traversing this straight line trajectory. So, traversing or matching this straight line trajectory is a two dimensional task which has to be performed by this 3 degrees of freedom manipulator. And the corresponding after the simulation the joint angles are coming out to be the gradual increase in each of the joint variables. Similarly, when redundancy is considered the obstacle is avoided when redundancy is not considered the obstacle is not avoided it gets into the collision with the obstacle whereas when we consider the redundancy part that is the second term i minus j pseudo inverse j into the redundancy part okay here the redundancy part is coming out to be the vector g into x2 minus x2 d when we have this redundancy term part we will be avoiding this obstacle as shown by this joint angular configurations which are where the joint angle angles are varying differently in order to avoid this obstacle. Now coming to the second application which is the singularity avoidance that is to avoid the singular configuration in the joint space. So similarly we have given the link parameters the initial configuration of the manipulator and its end effector position. Now coming to this uh, MAT, MATLAB simulation we have first case of this singular configuration one we are getting into the singular configuration because we are not considering the redundancy part.
Next we consider the redundancy part thereby we are avoiding the singular configuration. This singular configuration avoidance is quantified in terms of the manipulability measure which is showing the manipulating capability of the manipulator in avoiding the singular configurations. Thus, if we see the manipulability plot, we have a um, decrease in the manipulability value. Whereas, in the case of uh, acquiring or exploiting the singularity uh, uh, redundancy part of the manipulator, which is the extra 1 degrees of freedom available when we exploit the redundancy, we are increasing the manipulability measure such that the singular configuration of the manipulator in traversing the desired trajectory of the straight line is obtained. Now, coming to the final application which is the joint angles that is the mechanical joint limits is avoided in this last application. So, given the joint angles this is a configuration to obtain this trajectory we need to have the joint angles theta 1, theta 2 and theta 3 to be within the safe ranges of its own joint angles. That is say theta 1 is varying from minus 90 degrees to plus 90 degree then we try to maintain that theta 1 joint angle remains in the center almost close to the 0 degree angle that is obtained by considering this objective criterion which is given by m of theta equal to minus 1 by 2 n summation of theta i minus theta i bar by theta i max to theta i minimum where theta i bar is the middle value of that joint range and theta i minimum is the minimum value of for theta i and theta i max is the maximum value of theta i and the ranges for this particular one example I have taken con uh, considering the previous conditions of the same manipulator with these ranges theta 1 varies from 0 to 180 and theta 2 0 to 150 and theta 3 0 to 180. Now coming to this simulation we have seen that the joint limit violation happens when we are not considering the redundancy. Thus, the first joint angle is given by the thinner line as shown in this joint profile, joint angular profile. We can see that the first joint angle range is to be within 0 to 180, but you can see that it is going to the negative region that is crossing this limit when we do not consider the redundancy in traversing or following a desired given circular trajectory of the end effector. When we consider the redundancy, we are within the safe joint angular range. where we can see that all the joint angles given by this thinner, medium thick and the thicker most profiles of the joint angles they are lying within the joint angular ranges given here 0 to 180, 0 to 150 and 0 to 180 for the 3 joints respectively. Now coming to the final slides which is the references for this lecture I have followed these references one is the foundations of robotics analysis and control by Suni Yoshikawa, then the obstacle avoidance for kinematically redundant manipulators by A. A. Masijevic and Klein, then 
modeling and control of robot manipulators by Bruno Cicilianu and uh, CVQ and then finally the handbook of robotics by Springer by the authors Bruno Cicilianu and Osama. Thank you very much.